So NASA wants us to believe that they went to the moon. Yeah. I just thought if you were going to go to the moon, maybe you should actually go to the moon? Like, how do you explain this? So I'm going to give you another reason why they're lying about the shape of the Earth. It's actually for legal reasons. So there's something called divine law, and then right under that, there's common law, and then right under that, there's statute law or admiral maritime law. Divine law is the law of God, common law is the law of the land, and admiral maritime law is the law of the sea or man's law. Admiral Maritime Law is the law of the court system. So in order for people to give up their divine rights and their common rights, then you have to convince them that they were not divinely created, that they do not live in a divinely created place. Hence, the globe lie. If you can get people to believe that they were accidentally brought into existence by a Big Bang, uh and it is a total random happenstance phenomenon where there is no God, then they are more likely to give over their uh, divine rights and their common law rights. So if everybody knows that they were actually created by God, then these man-made institutions, these court systems and things like that, they have absolutely no authority over the common people. If you could have me for 24 hours and I couldn't say no, what would we do? <laughs> I would throw you down on my couch and have long, deep, intimate conversations about how NASA lies, Earth is flat and stationary, water always finds its level, and it doesn't stick to spinning balls. Cheers! Y'all know what an anagram is? NASA is just an anagram for Satan, minus the T. That's why they say T minus before they shoot the rocket. I'm triggered. <laughs> Don't care. So I've been getting older lately. It's my birthday today. Happy birthday. Thanks. Uh, one more year on this disc, this body of water and land uh, surrounded by Antarctica. I want to thank my dad and my I want to thank my mom, my mom and my sister for giving birth to me. Have you ever tried to pour water onto a globe? It rolls off. Try pouring water onto a plate, because that's what the earth is shaped like. You're a flat it... earther? Hey, whoa, Captain. <laughs> Didn't see you there, bud. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Yeah, they look a little faker than most images we do. I, I didn't I didn't do these personally. I can. I can get in touch with Robert Simmons, see if he can throw some clouds on there for you. <laughs> He's up, buddy. <laughs> Do you know how fast the Earth is flying through the universe right now? The Earth is flying 67,000 miles an hour around the sun. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. So it's spinning around, hello, 900 miles an hour, while it's flying around the sun at 67,000 miles an hour. Warning. Bullshit alert! Bullshit level, DEFCON 5! Bullshit detected! Take precautions! You know what one of my favorite books is that tells me that the Earth is flat and not spinning or rocketing through space? My favorite book. My favorite book to look to in regards to where I live. It's the Bible. B I B L E. That's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God. The B I B L E. Yeah, it's a flat Earth book. Hundred percent flat Earth book. The Earth is ringed by two zones of high energy particles. These areas are now called the Van Allen radiation belts in honor of the physicist whose work led to their discovery. The existence of the Earth's radiation belts presents a very serious hazard to future space travel. What is the intensity of this radiation? What does it consist of? How much shielding will the first space travelers need in order to penetrate these deadly areas of radiation safely? Alright, in this video, the sun and the moon are straight across from each other.
the, the earth's not in between them. So you tell me how this moon is not full. The moon's supposed to be a reflection of the sun, supposedly. The edge of the world, how does it look like? Many people who have been indoctrinated by the globe earth theory, brainwashed by the modern science concept of cosmology, will always asking the same question, if the earth was flat, where's the edge of the earth then? Talking about the edge of the world is not like we're talking about the idea of the world we know today, the world which full of fraudulence and propagandas. If we look back to the earlier age of human history, our ancestors in many cultures spread throughout the entire world, speaking and depicting the earth as an enclosed environment system, with a dome above the earth. This cosmological concept of the universe was well preserved for thousands of years, until some Roman scholars made a counter theory of the well-known geocentric cosmology, known as the heliocentric model of the universe. This paganic concept of sun-worshipping ideas was referring to the ancient Egyptian cultures, which put the sun god Ra as their god amongst any other gods such as Horus, Osiris, and Isis. The heliocentric model of the universe was willing to put the real god aside and replace him with another gods, the sun god. They couldn't remove the real god if the earth was indeed the center of the universe, or the geocentric concept, and so they made the sun as the center of the universe. So, if the worldwide cosmological concept, or the heliocentric concept still used for every education, explorations, and mapping, we couldn't get the chance to explore far beyond Antarctica. Furthermore, finding the edge of the world is highly unlikely achieved. Unless, we work together as people power and go against the mainstream science and media to change this paganic concept of the universe, and put back Earth as the center of the universe as the holy scriptures mentioned, until then, we would know how the edge of the Earth looked like. Did you know that the Bible literally tells you how the Earth is shaped? People say to me all the time, the Bible doesn't tell us whether it's flat or round. Um, actually, yes, it does. In Job, it says that the earth takes shape like clay turned to a seal. Well, what does that mean exactly? What is clay turned to a seal and how is it shaped? In scripture, when it talks to, when he's talking about like how he created the earth, he's, he's asking Job. He, I, I mean, you could read the whole thing, but here, I'm going to start it for. He says, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if you have understanding. Who set its measurements, if you know, or who stretched the line upon it? Line, straight line. Upon what were the foundations sunk, or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of Elohim shouted for joy? Or who enclosed the sea with doors when it burst forth from the womb? This is the ice wall he's talking about. When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness a swaddling band and assigned for it my law and set bars and doors and said, This far you have come, but no further, and here your proud waves stop. Have you ever commanded the morning star and caused the dawn to know its place, to take a hold of the ends of the earth and the wrong be shaken out of it? It is changed like clay under a seal, and they stand out like a garment. That right there, if you look up the biblical seals, it tells you exactly how he created it, what exactly it looks like, okay? Scripture is very clear. God is very clear about the world you were created in. Earth is flat. It is definitely not as, well, okay, it's not flat. It is changed or turned like clay to a seal, pressed. It's pressed like clay to a seal. Let me show you. Let me show you what biblical seals. Biblical seals. Biblical seals. Here is our biblical seals. Now, some of you are, um, they're called creationists. They're not Christians. They, they believe in creation. They don't necessarily believe the Bible. They'll tell you that it's not true or it can't be taken literally. And I mean, I guess I understand why they say some of those things because there's so many versions. But nonetheless, this is biblical seals. Now, those creationists will tell you that biblical seals in the day that Job was written were cylinder seals. So let's do biblical cylinder seal. Let me just show you this right here. Look at that. The earth takes clay, takes shape like clay to a seal. This is what it takes shape like. Except for we already know 
by looking at the maps of the world and flight maps and the map of the UN, that this is actually what it really looked like, what it looks like. This is what it looks like, folks. This is the place in which you live. Like it, it's turned like clay. It has, it has a barrier that holds in the great waves, the ice wall. It has all of that stuff. It's, <laughs> All it takes is a little bit of research and you'll find that what you've been taught by NASA and science is lies. It's all lies. Um, like I was told today that the Bible says the earth is a sphere. Mm -mm. No, it doesn't. And I'm going to show you that it doesn't. The verse in question here is Isaiah, Isaiah 40. And it's Isaiah 42. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Okay. Circle. Isaiah, just a few books before uses the word ball. Let me show you. Oh, maybe, wait, hold on, I'm going the wrong way. Isaiah 22, he uses the word ball. He says he'll toss you. I think Isaiah knew the difference between a um, circle and a ball, but not only that, look at this. Okay, looky here, ready? Oh, wrong way. Circle, circle circle around plane you want me to google the word plane or do y'all already know that plane literally means flat straight line circle definition of circle huh yeah okay next let's find out what it says about a sphere hmm oh look at that a round solid figure hmm looks like i'm not the one twisting scripture or trying to convince people of my own personal beliefs am i and I want to just real quick, so there's no confusion. Let's see. Let's look up the word plane. It's P-L-A-N-E, I think. Plane. Oh, there we go. Yeah, exactly. A flat surface on which a straight line joining any two points on it. Looky there. Looky there. Hmm. A level of existence completely level or flat come on guys seriously it's right in plain sight like it's so so simple you were lied to for a reason billions of dollars goes into nasa and it probably goes into murdering children wake up and the funny sad thing about it is they snap at me and tell me that I'm wrong. And then before I can respond, they walk away. And they don't listen to me at all. They're not willing to. If they really wanted to know the truth, they'd find it. Seek it and you shall find it. Have a blessed day, folks. Dear NASA, it's becoming 100% crystal clear that you and the other space programs that are in operation are connected and are deceiving the entire world. More and more people are waking up every single day. And we are now able to see right through you. But what we really want to know is, why are you lying? Sincerely, me and the great people of this earth.